All right, so the 10 mistakes that beginning actors tend to make. A lot of actors I will say this, and I can't tell you how many times I've had to observe this from either it's being self tapes that are sent into me, I see actors on camera or I see them on a big stage. It's truly not knowing what does your character really want. A lot of actors will kind of have maybe a general idea and you'll see this a lot, especially if you're doing acting classes where an instructor might ask the actor, hey, what does your character want? What are you wanting right now? What are you trying to achieve? And all those questions that'll be asked. And a lot of times you'll realize, especially if you're sitting there and you're not actually in the moment, because there's a difference between being in the moment, it's kind of hard to think about it, but you really see it from sitting down and watching. You'll see that a lot of people won't have any idea. They'll be like, um, I kind of think this is what my character wants. I kind of think this is what they're gonna do. You don't want this kind of sort of idea. You want it to be, this is what my character's gonna do. I know what he wants. I know what she wants because of A, B, C, D, what happened in the past. And so many people don't truly know what does their character actually want. When you know what your character wants, what their intention is, what they're looking for, how you play that scene is going to be completely different. If your character wants world domination, it's going to be different than if your character wants to win this girl over. Or it's going to be different if this character wants to win this girl over because he knows that she has a lot of money and he's going to inherit that money. And once he inherits that money, he'll be able to help his family back home. That is one want compared to, oh, I want to go and be with this girl because she's the love of my life. Two completely different wants, two completely different ways that you're going to look at the world and perceive this scene and how you will approach it. So truly knowing what your character wants is so important and a lot of people just don't take advantage of it. Uh, point number two is the outfit. So I had this actor who sent me in uh, two self tapes the other day for two completely different characters. One was kind of more the boy next door character, another one was uh, like a bad boy type character. And the auditions were fine, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm gonna be talking about the outfits that this actor had. Two outfits should have been chosen for these characters, but that's not what happened. What happened was I saw two different audition takes with the character wearing both of the exact same outfits. Now you have to realize the outfit also tells a story. The visual of what we see, because I have to think about it as if I'm the casting director. That's how I'm trying to help this actor out. Yes, from the out acting perspective, but also what is the industry, what is the world gonna see when he puts out a self tape like this. And his character wore the exact same thing for both of them, when he was playing the bad boy character, when he was playing the boy next door. You don't want to do that. I had to try and use my imagination more to try and picture, okay, can I really see these guys being the bad boy? Or can I really see these guys being the boy next door? The outfit leaned in more to a boy next door character, so it was a lot easier for me to see that. But when I had to compare it to the bad boy, it just didn't really work. There was a lot more work that I had to do with my imagination. And you don't want that to happen for the casting director. You really want them to see you and go, you know, I think this person could be a good fit for this part. I can see them playing this character and the outfit helps with that. So anytime you're doing a self tape, you want the outfit to have the essence of the character. So use it, try to help yourself out. Don't diminish your takes by going and wearing something completely off topic from your character. Try to wear things that give the essence of that character. Point number three is implementing the tool of knowing your character's backstory. So knowing your character's backstory is gonna be one of the most important things to help you as an actor because it's gonna affect how you go and see the future and how you act upon the actions of your characters in a given specific moment in time. So that's a lot of words, let me simplify that. What it is is if your character in their past had a horrible upbringing, let's imagine, and nothing ever went right for them, nobody ever helped them with anything in their life, and now they're gonna apply for this job, how are they gonna be compared to if the backstory changed? And let's say the backstory was this person got everything they wanted in their life. Their parents were super rich. Everything always went right for them. They never were said no to. Everybody said yes to them. Now, that same individual is going to be applying for this job. Are there going to be two different characters? Are they going to be played two different ways? Well, they should be played two different ways. And the reason that we know that is because of the backstory. So just simplify your life a ton and just find out what is your character's backstory. A lot of that has to go and deal with you going through and analyzing the text of your scene or your script. And also sometimes it has to do with a little bit of imagination if you don't have all the information within the text, which it does happen also. The next point is process. And I can't believe how many actors I have seen who just simply don't have a process for themselves. And I'm not talking just about beginning actors. I've seen actors who have been in this industry now for three, four years, or they've gone to drama school. And you're going to ask these actors and you're gonna tell them, hey, so 
what is your process? What do you do? You know, if you have a character and you have to go and portray this scene, if you get booked for a role, you got an audition, what is the step-by-step -step process that you use for yourself? A lot of them won't really have an idea. A lot of them, if you ask them, might say, um, well, I kind of go and do this. If you hear somebody go and say, um, well, I kind of, they don't really know. They're kind of trying to make something up on the spot. You have to know for yourself, what is your process? Because if you don't have a process as an actor, what ends up happening is it means you're winging it and you're going off of your instincts, which is also not a bad thing. But the only problem with only relying on that means that you are an inconsistent actor. Meaning sometimes you're gonna have great auditions. Everything's gonna work out for you. But other times you're gonna have auditions for yourself and it might not. It might be okay or the audition just doesn't go well at all. You wanna have a process for yourself because it makes you more consistent. If you know, hey, when I do these things, it helps me get into the character. It helps me get into the role. It helps me book more auditions. When I do these things, I have more success. And you have to start analyzing that and realizing that for yourself to build a process. Because when you have a process, you end up being a more consistent actor. Does this mean you will never have any bad days? No, you will. Sometimes you're going to have an audition that doesn't go the way that you maybe wanted it to go. But ultimately, you're going to have more successful days when you have a process. So if you're just starting out as an actor, or maybe you've been in this industry for a while, and you don't have a process, every time you start to learn something new, every time you start to have little wins for yourself, and the scene is going well, or you have those moments of being in the moment of a scene, start to pick up on that and think, why did I get there? How did I get there? What did I do? So then you can keep consistently implementing it for yourself, and that will be a consistent process that you have. Point number five is realizing that you have every character in you. A lot of people think, oh, they can't play certain characters and they put themselves in boxes thinking I can only play type A characters, type B, type C characters, and they limit themselves from playing other roles that are going to be available to you. I know some actors who will say, I could never play a gang member. It just doesn't work for me. I can never do it. I've never lived in a life like that, which is true. Maybe you've never lived in a life like that, but you shouldn't limit yourself by saying I can never play those roles. That is a very limiting thing to say for yourself as an actor because it's not true because if you grew up in that life, if you grew up in the life of living around gangs and being in gangs and living around those type of people, the way that you grow up would be more developed towards that area, but you just never lived in that way. So even though that's not how you lived, even though that's not in your backstory, what you have for your life, that doesn't mean that that's not a character or a world that you can't dive into. That's not something that you can't go and do your research on and try and find it. So it means we have every character in us. We have every single character. Now, the way that you portray that character will be different than I portray it. It will be different than our neighbor goes and portrays that character. But the point is, just because it's different doesn't mean that we don't have those characters somewhere inside of us. And sometimes it takes a little bit of research. Yes, as actors, you have to do your research and you also have to have tools and a process for yourself on being able to get into those moments. Point number six is framing. I'm gonna keep this one really short. When it comes to self tapes, you gotta have good framing for yourself. I mentioned this in a lot of other videos. I mentioned this a lot in my self tape videos. I'll just put up on the screen here so you can see an example of the type of framing that you're gonna want. You're not gonna get an F if you're a little closer, if you're a little farther away. This is just the general idea of what you're going for. Remember, when it comes to film work, being on camera, the eyes are doing a lot of the acting. The eyes are telling the story. On theater, on stage, it's going to be a lot more of your body, a lot more of your voice that gets involved. But on camera, it's a lot of the eyes and the voice, but not as much safe for the physicality as you would when you're on stage. Point number seven is headshots. You have to realize how important it is to have great headshots for yourself. If you do not have good headshots, it's going to limit you on being able to get into the room of being with good agents or managers to get representation for yourself. It's also going to limit the auditions that potentially you could have gone out for. If you have a great headshot, that's a picture of you that you go and give to the casting directors or you go and give to the agents, when they see it and they like it and they think, hey, you might be the right person for this part, they're going to go and bring you in and say, hey, come in for the audition. Let's give you the opportunity to try out for it. But you have to have a good headshot and you can't limit yourself by having a headshot that's just okay or really not that great at all. Point number eight has to do with self-taping again, but it has to do with props. So here's the thing. If you're going to use props at all on your self-tapes, you want to keep it to a minimum. You don't want to use a lot of props at all. 
Now, you wanna make sure if you're doing a scene, so say for example, you have a scene and you're gonna be drinking a glass of water. You don't wanna pamp to mine it. You don't wanna be like, oh, look at me, pretending to go and drink some water here. You wanna go and have an actual glass of water that you can go and take and drink because otherwise you may be doing a great scene. We may be captivated, we may be in it. We may go in, whoa, let's see what this guy does next. And then all of a sudden, we see you pretending to drink a glass of water. It takes us out of the moment. I had an audition before. This was kind of more towards the beginning uh, when I was first starting to go and do self tapes and I remember I was doing this self tape and I kept watching it over and over and over and something just wasn't right I had to go and be in this scene and to go and take a note from somebody So what happened was the scene was going great I liked it and then all of a sudden I would go boom took a note just like this boom I took it then I pretend to open it like this whatever and then I'm going and pretending to read it But it, there's nothing here. You can see everything that's going on. There's nothing here. It's all imaginary, right? So I didn't know at the time what was going on, why it wasn't working. And then I decided, you know what, let me go and try and put a, you know, I made my own little note to go and be able to put it in the scene. So then when I went to take something, I actually went and took a note so you could see me take a note. And then I go and I open it and you see me opening the note and you can see me looking at it. Then it's not me pantomiming, it's you actually able to see it. And again, you don't have to use your imagination to pretend like, oh, he's looking at a note. You could actually see that I was looking at a note because I had one and that changed the whole thing completely. So if you're gonna go and use props, use them, but use them just a little bit. You don't wanna have a whole, you're not building a whole entire scene here. And this is only really applicable to doing uh, your self tape auditions, not really applicable when you're doing in-person auditions because you don't really wanna bring props into those situations. But when you're doing a self tape, you have a little bit more liberty there. So take advantage of it, use it to your advantage. Point number nine, work on developing another talent for yourself. Typically a talent in the arts. So that could be martial arts, that could be um, going and doing dancing, that could be going and doing a musical instrument. The point is when you do those things, it allows you to have more opportunities to get more auditions for yourselves. And as an actor, you wanna get as many auditions as possible. So meaning you can have regular auditions where they're just looking for an actor, but there will be some auditions where they're looking for an actor who can also play music or for an actor who can also dance or also do martial arts. And if you don't have those skills or talents, you're not gonna be able to go on auditions for those roles, which means you're limited then on certain auditions. Whereas if you can play music for yourself, you have a better opportunity at being able to get into more rooms. So learn something else. Try to learn a musical instrument, try to learn to dance, try to learn a martial arts. You can pick which one. You don't gotta be a master at it, but you should learn how to do it at least a little bit. Now, our last point here is super simple. Say no to classes that are not working for you. I see too many actors and I hear it all the time where they talk about, oh, I hate this acting class. I don't like this instructor. I don't like the people in it. I don't like blah, 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 blah. All these things that they don't like. And I look at them and then I tell them, well then leave. If you don't like it, leave. You don't have to be there. You have to remember as not just an actor, but as a human being, you have the right to go and say no. You don't have to say yes to everything. If you're taking an acting class and you don't like the class, just leave, go to another acting class, go and take it with somebody else because at the end of the day, you gotta be happy with your choices that you make. And at the end of the day, you don't wanna get your confidence ruined because you went to a class that didn't help you at all. You wanna be able to go and take classes and lessons from things and people that you like. So know that you have the ability to say no and don't feel pressure to always say yes. I see too many actors always saying yes to things that they don't wanna say yes to. So if you wanna say no, say no. So I hope you guys like this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up if it helped you all. Also leave down in the comment section below a thumbs up also so I know if you went through and saw the whole entire thing. Good for you if you did. And I'll see you all in the next video. All right, bye-bye.